Hi everyone, welcome back again to the channel and to a new video. Today we are going to look at VDO. VDO stands for Virtual Data Optimizer and it's a method to compress data on your device block. It's made of three components, thin provisioning, deduplication and compression. More about it in the video, so let's dive right into it. So here we are on the desktop of Arch Linux. This is just a basic install with the GNOME desktop environment, but this is with an LTS kernel. And if you want to try out VDO, I recommend you to install the LTS kernel because it's not going to work with the latest kernel yet. I have a video on the channel about how you can install the LTS kernel, so you can check this out if you want to try VDO. VDO stands basically for Video Data Optimizer. And it's a block virtualization technology that combines three components, compression, deduplication, and thin provisioning. Using these components with video, you can save storage space inline, compress files, eliminate duplications, enables you also to allocate more virtual space than how much the physical or logical storage provides, and enables you also to extend the virtual storage by growing. I have here a blog post that I found on the Red Hat website that I can show you very quickly. Let me pull over the website here. There you go. And you can see here it says video combines the three techniques that I just mentioned. And it shows you here with a picture how it works. So we have here our video data reduction processing. It eliminates basically zero blocks by thin provisioning. Data deduplication eliminates duplicate blocks and data compression compress the remaining blocks. So this can be used to save storage space and reduce costs. Of course, this is more true in a data center or on a server, but we can also use DVO to save storage also on our machines. Now, one drawback of DVO is that it does use a little bit more resources of the system, meaning CPU and RAM. Nevertheless, if you want to try it out, let's go ahead and try it out on Arch Linux. So let me close this up. I will leave a link, of course, to it in the video description below. And let's open up our terminal because most of the work is done there. And I'm going to open up here full screen and increase the font size. Now, we need to make sure that we are on the LTS kernel here. So to do this, I can type in uname-r. And you can see the kernel here is 54721LTS. So that's OK. Also, make sure that you have the Linux headers installed for the LTS kernel, which is the package Linux LTS headers. And now we can go ahead and install the packages we need for our video. So to do this, we need one package, which is called DKMS or the Dynamic Kernel Module Support, which is a framework that enables generating Linux kernel modules whose sources generally reside outside the kernel source tree. And then we can install the VDO package from the AUR, which includes also other dependencies. Now to do this, I'm going to use yay because I have already available in my system. So to install the packages, I will type in yay dash s. And the first package I want to install is DKMS. And I'm going to install also video and then I can hit enter. Enter my sudo password and proceed with the installation of DKMS first, which is going to take a moment. And now we can install also the video packages we need. You can see we have three packages to install. So difference is to show none and hit enter and now proceed with the installation. Now this is going to take some time to download and install. So I'll be back when it's done. There you go, the packages are now installed. So let's clean up the terminal and let's type in lsplk. So you can see here in this machine, I have VDA and VDB. VDA is my main disk here with a logical volume and VDB, it's an empty disk. So what I want to do, I want to create a partition on VDB and then create my video in there. So to do that, I'm going to use gdisk because it's a UEFI system and I need to have a GPT label on here. So I'm going to type in sudo gdisk slash dev slash vdb any enter i want to create a new partition so i'll type in n for new any enter partition number one default is fine first sector is also fine the last sector defines the size of the disk basically and for a video we need to have at least four gigabytes so the disk is 20 gigabytes i'm going to create eight gigabytes so i'm going to type in 8g any enter the linux file system is fine so i can hit enter here and now we can write the changes to the disk by typing in W and hit enter. Confirm and hit enter again. And the operation has been completed successfully. But as you can see here, it says in my case, the new table will be used at the next reboot or after you run the part probe. So let me type in, in here sudo part probe. 
and hit enter. And there you go. So let's clean up the terminal and type in again lsplk. And you can see we have there VDB1, which is our partition. So let's go ahead and create our video volume on this partition. To do this, we need to type in sudo video create. Then dash dash name equal. We need to give a name to this volume. So I'm going to call mine very simply video1. You can, of course, replace the name if you want to. And then dash dash device equal. We need to put in the partition we just created, which is slash dev slash VDB1. And then dash dash video logical size equal. I'm going to give here a one terabyte size for the logical size. So I'm going to type in here one T and then I can hit enter. And there you go. The volume instance is now created and it's ready at dev mapper video one. So let's clean up the terminal and type in again lsbk. And you can see we have here our disk, the partition we created and our video, which is one terabyte in size. Now we need to create a directory in the system where we can mount video one into. So to do this, we can type in sudo mkdir and I'm going to create a directory with the same name of the volume, which is video one. And then I can hit enter. There you go. And now we can mount our video one into the video one directory. Now there are several ways to do this. We can do it through the FS tab file, or we can also do it through a system D mount, which is probably a little bit easier. So to do a system D mount, we can copy actually a file which is already present in the system and use it as an example. Let me show you where it is. Let's go to one directory by typing in cd slash user slash share slash doc slash video slash examples slash systemd and hit enter. And let's type in ls. You can see we have here one video mount example file. So what we need to do, we need to copy this file into our Etsy systemd system directory. To do this, we can type in sudo cp and then video mount example. And we're going to copy this under slash Etsy slash systemd slash system and hit enter. Let's go to that directory there. Let's type in cd slash Etsy slash systemd slash system and hit enter. Type in ls. And here we have our video mount example file that we need to work on. So let's clean up the terminal and type in sudo vim. I'm going to use vim. If you have another editor, it will work fine as well. And then video mount example. And we need to change some things in here. So the first thing we need to change is under the unit section, the name. The name will reflect basically the name of the device, which is video one. So I'm going to edit this and I'm going to replace video with video one. And I'm going to change also the mapper name because it's not my video. If you remember, it's again video one. And the where directory to mount this is not slash video, but it's video one. And as a file system type, it's going to be ext4. I'm going to format this in a second. And then we can save the file and exit vim. Let's format our volume by typing in sudo mkfs.ext4 dash e no discard now i'm going to use this option because if you don't it's going to take some time to format the video and then the video path which is slash dev slash mapper slash video one and hit enter and there you go so now that we formatted the drive let's type in here again ls we are still in the system directory we need to change the name of the file from video mount example to video one dot mount that we specified in this file actually. So to do this, we can type in sudo mv for move and then video mount example. And we're going to call this video one dot mount and hit enter. Now we can mount our video by typing in sudo system ctl enable dash dash now and then video one dot mount and hit enter. There you go. So let's verify this by typing in system CTL status video one dot mount and hit enter. And you can see it's active and mounted. So let's clean up the terminal one more time and let's type in here sudo video stats dash dash human dash readable and hit enter. 
So you can see here our devices, which is Dev Mapper Video 1. The size is 8 GB. This is the physical size of the partition we created. We use 4 GB for the video, which are allocated as a 1 TB video size. And that means available there are still 4 GB. So it means we used basically 50% of the physical space. Now, if we type in here df h slash video1, you can see here the size of the mapper is 1 terabyte. We used 77 megabytes available 956. We basically used 1%. Now, this is all good, but let's get out of the terminal for a second here. And let's open up the file browser. And let's go here to other locations and go to computer and scroll down to video one. This is our directory. We can right click on the directory and click properties. And we see also here it's a one terabyte directory. So we can close this and click in here. And let's right click here and you can see we cannot actually create anything in here. And that's because the directory is belonging to the root user, but we can change this very quickly. Let's close this up and open up again our terminal. I'm going to get full screen so that you can see better here with the bigger size. Let's switch over to the root user by typing su and then a dash and enter our pseudo password. And now let's type in chon dash r for recursive. I want all the files also in the directory to belong to me. Then my username and then the directory video one. And then I can hit enter. Now, if I type in ls dash l slash video one, you can see I am now the owner of the directory. So I can type in exit and close the terminal up. Let's open up again the file manager and let's go down again to other locations, computer, and let's go to video one, right click here. You can see now I can create a new folder. So that means I can write on this directory. Now what we can do also, we can go back here to computer and we can drag this folder also here as a new bookmark and we can right click on it and rename it to something else, like for example, data or backups or whatever you want to. And you will have always this accessible here for you. Now, if you don't want to use video anymore and you want to remove it, you can open up the terminal. The first thing we need to do is to unmount the directory. So we can type in sudo umount slash video one and hit enter. Then we can type in sudo video remove dash a for removing all if you have multiple videos you can specify the name but in my case i have only one so that's fine and now the video it's gone if we type in lsblk you can see we are back to vdv1 now if you don't want to have any more video at all in the system we need to also remove the mount so to do this we need to type in sudo systemctl disable dash dash now and then video1.mount and hit enter and there you go. And now we could also remove the video mount file we created in the Etsy system, the system directory. But if you want to do that, you can go ahead. I will leave it there. So this is how you can use video on Arch Linux. If you try it out, let me know in the comments below how it works for you. I always recommend you anyway to make a backup of your data before trying something like this. It's just good practice because you are changing some things in the system and you are installing some extra modules. And if you have any other questions, let me also know in the comments below. I will try to answer you as soon as I can. So there you go. This is how you can use video on Arch Linux. It's a great tool and it can help you a lot saving storage space on your machine. If you try it out, let me know in the comments below how it works for you. And if you have any questions, let me also know in the comments below. I will answer you as soon as I can. I hope you liked this video, guys. If you did, please hit the thumbs up and subs to the channel if you haven't already. Subs always helps us out. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by visiting our Patreon website or you can donate via PayPal to our website as well. Thank you so much for watching the video, guys, and I'll see you very soon in the next one.